Hi there, nice people, hello, lady and gentlemen. If you're wondering why this Kersha live wire was cutting paper so poorly, watch this. This is an even harder test. Clearly, it now cuts, but this is the video of all the tests that I did to this knife, and believe me, I went hard on it. The video is in reverse order, so the farther you watch, the farther back in time you're going with me. Why was the knife so dirty? Stick around. You will see it going back in time. But for now, you should be wondering, why is there a can of dog food in the background? MagnaCut meat tin. I do not recommend you do it with any knife, especially with the one that it's as refined as this Kershaw live wire. But, you know, it's a test. So let's test it. If you are not cringing watching this, you may not be a knife person. But there is a method to my madness. You see, the tin captures the blade so tightly that potentially it could unlock. And this greasy mess that our dogs enjoy so much can really gunk up mechanism on any OTF and fail it. Surprised? I'm not, because before I did this, I did all that. This is what I called field washing. So you can tell the blade is dirty. Stand by for why is it that dirty. And here I am in the local stream trying to wash the gunk out of the knife. What I do to knives should not be a surprise to my viewers. Have you watched the video that I published a couple months ago where I expose Microtech Ultratech Benchmade Shootout Hogue Exploit and RIA EXOM OTFs to really harsh environmental conditions? Needless to say, this fine piece of cutlery had to go through similar trials. And here is why I ended up washing this knife in the creek a few moments later. Pretty wet, thick, gritty soil. What the heck? It's like nothing happened. If you watched the before-mentioned video about these four knives, you already know what happened when I tried to fire them underwater. And so, of course, I had to do it to the live wire. If you haven't played with this knife yet, what is surprising about uh, what you just saw is how soft it is on your thumb. It deploys with a, a lot less effort than any, I'm not afraid to say any of the 15 or so OTFs that I have. That's why I was so shocked when I saw that water squirting out of it as if it was a water gun, because that requires a lot of power. Let's watch it in slow-mo again. Epic is the word I'm looking for. And by the way, don't try it with your knives because after exposing it to that much water, you have to disassemble it, dry it, and then lube it. Now, let's jump into the present moment. I already disassembled, cleaned, dried, and lubed this knife. And there'll be a video coming out that shows all that. 
And when it does come out, trust me, you will want to see it, even if you never disassemble your OTFs. Because there's so much going on inside this knife, you will probably want to know about it, whether you already own it or just thinking about getting it. But let's stop talking because if you're my viewer, you're already anticipating the Tree of Doom adventures. What you're witnessing here is me pulling the knife that is lodged deep into the stump. I'm applying quite a bit of force to pull it out to see if the blade will self unlock when the pulling force is applied. What you should be really wondering is not why I'm pulling on the blade, but how did I get it stuck in the stump an inch and a half deep? Don't do this to your knives. I, I can't watch. Before hammering this blade into the tree stump, I tried spine strikes, edge strikes, and blade side strikes to see if any of that activity will unlock the blade or knock it off tracks. As it happens with some OTFs, even more expensive ones. And I could do absolutely nothing to defeat the mechanism on this live wire. I'm crazy. Let's jump forward to the future for a few seconds. OTF knives with a dagger style blade are designed primarily for penetration. And to test penetration on such knives, I use this Kevlar plate carrier bulletproof vest. What I found is that knives that have more of an EDC geared blade like this, perform rather poorly. And the knives with a dagger style blade perform well, like this. To the hilt. Now, Kersha chose to combine stylistic clues from both EDC blades, allowing you to place the thumb here, and the dagger in a general shape. I have not tested a blade like this yet, so I'm as eager as you are to find out how it will do. Almost as good, so that much was left, so not all the way to the hilt. Let me do it again, because I feel like I maybe pulled the strike a little bit. And that's correct, I did pull it earlier. As you can see, it went in to the hilt, the entire, what is it, three and a half inch blade has penetrated. And this is a dense insulation foam. The whole reason I started this channel is so that I can bring to you the test that no other reviewers risk doing, except for maybe one or two. And the reason I think it's important is if you're going to shell out 200 bucks, 200 plus dollars for a knife that's primarily designed for striking and penetrating, you have to know if you're getting your money worth. And that is why I'm doing this test. It's very liberating to be an unaffiliated knife reviewer because my livelihood, thank goodness, does not depend of somebody sponsoring my channel, sending me free samples, or you know, paying me commissions for directing you 
to the knife website. So what do you get out of that? What you get is if this knife failed, which it didn't, that's the most amazing thing. It did not fail, but if it did, I would still show it to you because I am not working for Kersher Knife Center, Blade HQ, or whatever. Draw your own conclusions.